Hey, what's going on, guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well as usual. Hope everyone had a great week making a screencast video this week. Just wrote down a bunch of thoughts I had. I'm um, just going to bullshit with everyone. Hope it's useful. I guess I tried to make the thoughts as organized as possible, but don't read the text. Um, just follow my voice and I'll walk you through this kind of thought train I had. So the audience for this video is kind of anyone that's ever felt overwhelmed with how much stuff you have to know. So this is AKA um, everyone at some point in time. I think everyone has been overwhelmed with the stuff that you should know. So this video is um, for us. Um, anyway, so I guess if you've been watching my videos for some while, I always kind of like preach or I always say like, you have to learn foundation. You should learn computer science. Uh, you should learn um, how computers work to be like a really effective programmer. And I guess there's a reason why I always say those things and I repeat those things. So kind of the core of this video is where those thoughts um, originated from. All right, so pretty much I made the title of this video, How Much Should You Know? And there's a lot, right? If you think about the world of computers, there's just so much to know. So how much should you know is kind of a crazy question. And we'll try to put that into perspective in this video. All right, so um, just follow my voice and we'll get through this document. It's not going to be so crazy. So first, let's just consider like the spectrum of things, okay? In the world of computers, there are a lot of layers and a big kind of stack. I call it a stack, it's just a big pile of stuff. And I guess you can consider it going from very low level to very high level, but it's just a big stack and a stack with many, many layers. So just check out this spectrum right here real quick. You can kind of, this is like, this is the spectrum or the stack on the most general layer that you can imagine, right? At the very bottom is like electricity, science. Like electricity, electrons flowing through metal. That's probably as low as it gets. And as high as it gets is code, right? The stuff, if you're a software engineer or software developer, this is code that you write. And this is probably at the very top of the stack. So, and in between, there's a shit ton of stuff, right? And what is going on in between here is pretty crazy to fathom. So let's, let's keep going. So how much do you really have to understand in that whole spectrum of things? So I had this uh, professor at CMU, uh, this intro level professor. I forgot his name. I forgot this professor's name, but he always said the same thing. He said something along the lines of this. You don't have to know the details about each layer, but you should be able to talk about each one on a basic level. So one more time, because I really like this saying, you don't have to know the details about each layer, but you should be able to talk about each one on a basic level. So this is kind of where I got a lot of influence from. I wish I remember this person's name. I, I forgot his name. He was a crazy professor. He would do those things where it kind of sucked at the time, but he would just call on you randomly to like answer questions. So if you weren't paying attention, he'd just embarrass you and he didn't give if he didn't give an F. He just embarrassed all these students, called them out just randomly. And if you couldn't answer, you kind of look like a fool. So pretty well, this professor was just a major influence on the way I think personally and why I preach foundation stuff all the time because that's what he preached. He always like this professor taught a lot of intro level courses uh, in the ECE program at CMU. I had him for three intro courses. So I had the same professor for three different introductory level courses, and he always talked about the same thing, like foundation, foundation, foundation. And then I think that's kind of why I preach that stuff too, because this guy like subconsciously incept inceptioned my mind. So I had him for intro to signals and systems. I had him for intro to computer engineering. I had him for analog circuits. And there's probably a lot more classes, but I forget because this guy taught so many things. But if you're not familiar with electrical computer engineering, these three are vastly 
like vastly different topics. And one guy taught them all on a really basic level. Like maybe he probably couldn't teach analog circuits on like a PhD level, but every single introductory level course he was qualified to teach, which is pretty crazy. Like at the time, I just thought this guy like knew everything. How does this one guy know so much stuff? So let's just go back to this spectrum, okay? So like at the very bottom, electrons flowing through metal or electricity all the way up to code. So, so one thing I thought would be pretty cool just for the sake of this video to put things in perspective is we can break down this kind of stack a little bit, layer by layer. Once you break down one layer, there will be another layer to break down and another and another and another. So you can get as granular as you want with this stuff, but let's just take baby steps first and do it together, all right? So let's just break down this first. So easy, let's call hardware is at the bottom and software is at the top, all right? Two layers in this stack, one is hardware, one is software. And hopefully that's pretty clear to understand, right? So, so that's, that's a little too simplistic, right? So let's just break down hardware a little bit. Like what are different levels in the hardware stack of things in the whole world of computing? So I just broke down them into like three levels. There's so many more levels in this, but this is just at a really, really high level, all right? So one, you could have like a circuit designer, like an integrator chip designer this person is kind of like maybe designing like really kind of low level circuits, like adding numbers, multiplying numbers. They could be designing like an ALU, different parts, like very highly specialized individual circuits that maybe are super fine tuned for performance. There's like a designer for that. All right. And then if you go one step above that person, there'll be maybe a processor designer. So a processor designer would take all the different components that a circuit designer might have designed and like they might just take all those different components and put it all together in a processor all right and then let's go one level above like a processor designer you might have like a system system on chip architect so um, if you guys aren't familiar with a system on chip this is pretty much like a fancy term but what it pretty means it, it, what it means is that people have taken like multiple processors which do very different things and all put it on the same chip so a good example of this is an iPhone right there's a processor for your applications there's a processor for motion uh, to detect like how you're walking there's like a graphics processor there's like a modem processor so you can make phone calls and someone takes all those different processors there's so many different processors this architect will take all those different ones and put it all together in something cool. So like that's just breaking down hardware into three basic levels and it's already pretty crazy, right? So, and they can keep getting broken down into further and further levels. So that's a little taste of like a hardware stack. So let's just talk about software a little bit. Very general again, but we're just gonna talk about software very generally. So the lowest level of software, you can think of maybe firmware or embedded software, and this is software that interacts with like actual hardware. This is software that's super close to the hardware. On top of that, you can have like operating system, system level software. These are people designing Linux operating systems, you know, like how virtual memory works, like system level engineering. And on the very top of that, even above that layer, we have application level software, which is where most people are. This is what the games, you know, people writing Angry Birds, Twitter, Facebook, application level software is where most people are at, all right? And this is the most popular software that people work on these days is that at this level. So I just wanna talk about one example of that. So one example application level software is web applications. So web application is pretty much anything that uses the internet, okay, pretty easy. I'm just bucketing this thing as anything on the internet. This is what I currently work on. This is what most people watching this video are probably looking to study. I bet um, if anyone's like an aspiring vit programmer, the most common thing to learn is web application development. Like 
So, and this is also what 99% of tech, tech that startups use. So this is really, really popular. And I'm sure you guys know how popular this is. So something that I just want to reiterate is that making web apps, making mobile apps, like all this internet technology, it's just a small, small subsection of application software that just uses the internet. So it's just a small piece of application software. If this is like a huge software spectrum, the stuff that most of us work on is like a little, 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 little piece of application level development. All right, so just to put that into perspective. And this is kind of why I think the term full stack developer is kind of um, bullshit and I don't like this term at all because when I think of the word full stack I really think of the full stack of computing like hardware like processor design up to software system level programming like all that stuff that's the real stack of computing but the way people use full stack now is kind of a little bullshit because people use the word full stack and it's the way it's used in modern lingo is always in the context of web programming. When you call someone a full stack developer, it's always implied that's in the it's in the context of web applications. So, just for example, if you went up to like a Linux systems programmer, like if you went up to like a Linux systems programmer, like if you went up to Linus Torvalds and you asked him or her if they were full stack, they would probably smack you in the face because they would be so offended. So. Just to reiterate, full stack in the web context, it really just means two things, all right? It's, it's really easy. People tend to like really put this word, like they put too much emphasis on this title and it's, I don't really like it, but that's just me. So it's just broken down into two things. Like it means you can write some front-end code and front-end code is code that runs on a web browser, like Chrome. That's what front-end Chrome, that's what front-end code is. Like client-side code, that usually runs on a web browser, on a mobile phone, you know, stuff like that. And the flip side, or the sister part of that code, is server-side code. And that's code that usually runs alongside a web server on a computer somewhere. So when people say full stack, it just means someone that can write code that goes into these two places, right? And what it really means is that, whoops, sorry. It means that you have full command of web applications. A full stack programmer should have, a full stack software engineer has full command of web applications. But um, in the end, web programming itself is just a small, small fraction of application programming. It's like so small and the word full stack is kind of misleading and kind of bullshit in my opinion. So that's enough ranting. I think I'm gonna like make myself angry if I keep going, so. Anyways, all right, so this coming to a conclusion with some of these random thoughts I had. Um, so what's the conclusion for all this? We have to end this video somehow, and the one major point that I think is a good takeaway is that you're never going to learn all parts of the stack in detail. It's just so much stuff. You'll never learn every single part in super detail, but the more you understand the big picture items at each level, the more powerful you'll become. If you know the basics of how hardware works, you're going to be that much better off. If you know the basics of you know, system level programming as well as application level programming, you're going to be that much better off. So don't get discouraged. Like the more you learn, the more you realize you just don't know more stuff, right? It's a never ending process. Like the more you learn, you just start realizing the more you don't know. And like the learning horizon just keeps getting farther and farther away. So. That's what makes it hard, that what makes all this stuff interesting, and hopefully that's why it keeps people excited. All right, so that's some random um, bullshit with everyone. Um, hopefully this video turns out okay, and I was smooth in some of this unediting, but that's it for this video. Hope everyone has a great um, week and kills it. All right, take care, guys.